Canada podcast where we talk all things franchising in Canada. Well, Canada, U.S., Australia, where else are we going to talk about today? With the one and only Malcolm Wilson from Tommy Gunn's Original Barbershop. How you doing, buddy? Fantastic, Steve. Thanks very much for the introduction. I mean, I couldn't be better when I look at what opportunities franchising has, especially with I would say some of the things occurring throughout both Canada and the U.S. with, a, I would say, some concerns regarding who's in power for the politics and that. And people look at what's next for me. How can I be in business for myself? Right. And right. now I see that interest in franchising. It's just taken off the last couple months. Well, first of all, let's just get this out of the way. We got the coolest shirts. We got the coolest duds here in, in all of North America going on. Even these shirts make us cool, Steve. Yeah, well, imagine. <laughs> you tell that to my nine-year-old. He says, I don't, I don't, dad, you don't have drip. Yeah. Whatever drip is, Wait, man. What does drip mean? <laughs> yeah, right? Well, now they're wearing Doc Martens and Nirvana shirts. And I said, Jesus, Murphy. But, but anyway, well, let's hop into it, Malcolm. Like, man, it's so good to see you. Your energy is always infectious. And, you know, the, the whole Tommy Gunn's original barbershop, as we know, myself, I've been in the, uh, the, the barbershop franchise uh, business for years. And I always say Tommy Guns is the pinnacle. It's the top of the food chain. And it's not just the top of the food chain in the men's barbershop industry. You guys are getting a ton of attention for people that are looking to invest in their future. And I always boast that over, you know, the vast majority of your owners are multi-unit owners. And you're seeing people from all walks of life come in and uh, you can't get a nap for a haircut. So I guess I don't even know where to start. Like, I mean, I, I'm always excited by your branding. I'm always excited by by your growth. But, you know, how are you doing the last the last year or so? You know, the last year for Tommy Gens has been our best in company history when it comes to growth. And I mean in two fronts. Uh, first, you want to look at the financial health of the business, which is your comparative same shop sales growth. We were 15% uh, 2023 over 2024, and we're trending the same way in 2024 over 2023. So it tells me what we're doing is doing right. Our existing business owners are growing their existing same shop sales. That's key. Second, I would say we have a bunch of existing business owners reinvesting and opening additional locations. That further validation that we must be doing things right. Why would they continue to reinvest with us if things were going well? And we also have a number of new business owners joining us on their journey. Often, I would say they come from either existing franchise or background. Either they work corporately or they've been a franchise in another system. So they understand what it means to work in a franchise system. And then I would say barbers within the sector, often that have married their guests over the years. And now their lifelong dream is owning their own Tommy Guns. Amazing. Simple circle. Amazing. Amazing. Well, and when you're looking at average unit volume and, and, and sales, you know, system sales going up, every time I go into a bar, uh, a Tommy Guns, Every time I go into one, you, you just, you just, you're just happy. I mean, it's buzzing in there. And when you, when you get happy people and the buzzing, no pun intended, um, you know, everyone's having a great time. The branding's awesome. But every time you hear that and you hear that snip snip, they're making sales, they're making money and the return rate that, that people come back and they just leave happy. Um, you know, what's been the, the, the secret, I shouldn't say the secret, but what do you attribute to having such a good year? Uh, I would say a couple things. I think first it starts with our business owners. Their continued commitment to uh, running things the Tommy Guns way. We call it running the play inside the four walls of the shop. Making sure that every guest every time gets that Tommy Guns experience. They've done a really good job of preaching that to the team and making sure the team adheres to it. That's our promise to our guest that walks in the door. And then second, I would say our continued education. Our barbers are really excited about how they're growing themselves and becoming better barbers technically and growing personally and professionally. So they're doing a better job on their cuts. So more guests are coming back more frequently because they want that Tommy Guns experience. They want to leave in a better mood. We always say we're selling confidence, not haircuts. And that confidence you get when you walk in and strut out the door, nothing beats it after leaving a barber shop. Amazing. Amazing. It, you know, it's it, I always say every time I leave a Tommy Guns, you smell better. Just love the smell of a fresh haircut, right? <laughs> but let's talk about talk about fresh. You got some new locations coming up, um, and you got some, you know, uh, there's there's some opportunities even in Ontario where you're kind of rocking it, you know, across the country. Like, what? Do you, how many locations in Canada now? There's we have, we have 87 in Canada. 87. We have 103 globally right now, and our really focus, I would say, is Ontario East with I would say strategic infill opportunities in BC and throughout the prairies. But when we look at Ontario East, it's a, it's a little bit different. Most franchises are starting the east to move their way west. We're starting yeah. the west, moving our way east. 
You have a proven brand with proven operating systems and proven team in place that's now looking to expand in the Ontario East market. So when we're looking for opportunities, it's not just the GTA. There's lots of opportunities outside the GTA. You look at like the North Bays, the Sault Ste. Marie's, the Thunder mm -hmm. Bays, the Peterborough's. There's lots of opportunities for communities that want barbershops and barbershops are community based. So if we can get involved in those local communities, we will be successful because there's nothing even close to it in their local community. Amazing. Amazing. Malcolm, franchise owners, your franchise partners are investing in Tommy Gunn's original barbershop. Where do they come from? What walks of life are they? I would say it's a combination of several things. Uh, the first would be, um, I would say, I'll classify as corporate refugees, individuals that have been packed out of their companies that are looking for the right opportunity for themselves. They've worked that nine, nine to five, Monday through Friday job for some time. They want to, they want to, give back to the community, right? They want to take control of their own destiny and uh, honestly be their own boss, be proud of themselves, but they don't want to be in business for themselves uh, or by themselves, right? That's the key is they want to, they want to be for themselves. That's critical. So when they look at our systems and structure that aligns well with them, that they know they're going to get the support in the journey. Uh, we also target, I would say, existing franchisees and other systems or people that have worked for franchisors, the understanding our concept is franchisable. And I would say barbers within the sector. And then last is our Tommy Gunn's guests. They've got a Tommy Gunn's experience and they think, you know what? I love this experience so much. I want to have my own barbershop. Love it. Well, I mean, man, it's, it's, you guys, with getting involved in Tommy Gunn's, it's, a lot of people say, well, I'm not a barber. I'm not a hairdresser. Do I, do I have to be a hairdresser to own one? And rather than me say the same thing, over, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it right over to you. What would you say to that? You know what? It actually, our model, we sell it work on versus work in. And what we mean by this is when you, the challenge sometimes when you sell to someone inside the sector, Steve, is that their natural tendency is to get behind the chair and cut hair. So what actually works out well for some people from outside the sector. And what I mean by that is that it forces them to work on it, right? Yes, they're going to need to work in it at first because they need to understand how it all works. But it forces them to be part of that local community to get guests to support you, part of the barber community to get guests that come uh, to work for you, and that work on that community inside the four walls of the shop. I would say what separates us is our systems and our structures. Like we have a little tools and measures in place so someone that has no experience in the sector can actually run the play here at Tommy Guns. We do a good job of supporting them operationally, operationally with our team that's in place. They go out in the field, they coach, they mentor, they develop. Um, the teams that are in the locations, as opposed to like that policing mentality, we believe in coaching, right? We take that opportunity. If you have a healthy competitive spirit or mindset, if you want to lead and inspire teams, and if you want to be part of your local community, we're an ideal concept for you. Right. Now, a lot of brands, you know, I shouldn't say a lot of brands, some, some franchise systems, they, you know, they want to train, they want to do, and they say, okay, go do your thing. Let us know when you're open. And then, but you guys kind of are there from, from the start to finish. And basically, here's your keys so that your franchise partners can focus on what's most important, get involved in the community. Why why has that been so important to Tommy Guns, where you guys are there right from the get-go, right to the very end? We wanted to take the pressure off our business owners. What we've experienced over the year, we've realized is that when they buy into a franchise system, they want to run the franchise, right? They don't want to build the franchise. They don't want to find the location. They don't want to negotiate a lease. They don't want to build a barbershop. I just want to run a business, right? Mm -hmm. What experience do I have in that? I would trust you to be the experts to build my shop from start to finish. So we sell a true turnkey uh, model at this point in time. And our belief is that if you focus on getting guests and getting barbers, we will do everything else for you. And that way you walk in the door, you get the keys, and then you're part of your community, and you just work on driving sales. That's all we really need you to do. Amazing. Well, you know, it, I tell you, there's nothing worse than trying to chase plumbers and drywallers whenever you're looking to open your business. Um, branding. Tommy Guns, it's so, it's, I don't want to say the word loud. It's just cool. It just appeals to everyone. It feels, yeah. appeals to me. It appeals to my nine year old, it appeals to my father in law. Um, it, you just nailed it. Um, why, why is branding been so important to you guys as, as a standout compared to some of the other ones where you just go by and it's, that's kind of vanilla. I think for our perspective, I'll look at it a little bit differently. I mean, number one, we need talent to grow the business. We need licensed barbers, right? The brand has to be cool to the barbers, right? They have to feel comfortable that they can bring their personalities to work, that they can be that professional artist and actually perform this cut the way they think it needs to be done, right? But adhering well to the Tommy Gun system. So it's critically important that it resonates with the barbers. That's number one. 
right? Because we need talent to work for us. Number two, we practice like a safe, edgy brand, I would say, where we're kind of cool and hip, but we run that line a little bit. We like to have fun with ourselves. We want to enjoy what we're doing. Our brand needs to reflect that because we want you to feel comfortable when you walk in the doors. We want you to bring that personality to work. And, and the other is just make a difference, right? That's all we ask, right? You're the deputy sheriff. We're going to deputize you. Let's see what you can do inside the shop. Right. And it looks like everyone's having fun. They are having fun. It looks How, like everyone's having fun. We always say, if you think it's fun going to a barbershop, try owning one. That experience you get in walking the door, that sense of community, having the barbers interact with another, the guests talk with one another, just seeing that excitement and buzz, I use your word that you used a little bit earlier in the, in the podcast, but that is fantastic. And then you feel like, I feel good about myself. I can be my best self while looking my best. Let's go about the day. And what impact can I make, right? And that, I love that about the sector. And you know what's nice? Not wearing a shirt and tie. No. Yeah, I'm on. You get to go in. You're comfortable, man. Yeah. It's casual, but rock star edgy. Just good because, let's face it, barbers are artists. They are. They really are, right? And, and you know, it, it's it's not the place where it's, you know, the, the top button is, is, is buttoned up and you got your clip-on tie or the Moors buy one, get one free. Um, it's just a real cool, casual atmosphere that, that pretty much everyone feels comfortable in. The evolution of, of, of Tommy Guns, maybe you can bring us back to kind of the, the, how it first started, where it first got going, where, it, you know, it, kind of to where it is today. Well, you know, we first opened in 2009 in, in Bower Place Mall in Red Deer, Alberta. So Ken Fisher that started the uh, Tommy Guns, he had another, he learned the largest chains of salons in Canada at that time, Chatters. So what he noticed for years is that the barbershop industry was lost, right? He had a lot of guests coming in for service. And he really wanted to bring that barbershop focus back in, right? Focus on a great customer experience. So for two years, he had pressured both his sons, his son and son-in-law, uh, Keenan Fisher and Corey Anderson, that we need to do a barbershop brand. But they were so focused on chatters, like, okay, now we got time, Dad. Okay, we'll listen to you. He's like, sons, there's something missing here. We need that right experience, that right environment. It's missing the modern amenities that today's guest actually wants, but it's missing that old classic uh, barbershop feel. So, okay, let's let's introduce Tommy again. So he launched it in Bower Place Mall in 2009, and it doubled its sales expectations the first year. And what really, for myself, what really stood out was these are people that are experts within the sector, and it doubled their sales expectation. So they knew they had something there. And all of a sudden, you, you fast forward, you did 1 million cuts within five years. You're at 10 million cuts by 2024. It just keeps compounding. And the story just keeps getting better. We're making a difference in people's lives one haircut at a time. And it's yeah. so much fun to be part of the journey. You know, and it's it's it it's not just geared towards one demographic. Like I said, you walk in there, you see the kids getting their haircut, you see people my age and my father-in-law's age, and 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 there's really no there's no boundary to to it, it, it's just a spot where where you know guys and girls, but dudes just come out feeling better, right? And so with with um Canada right now. How many locations or, you know, the prime, I know we're working on uh, Ontario uh, East. There's still a few pockets here and there, but you know, if we're, if we're talking to someone from, from Ontario or from the Atlantic or New Philip, where are some, some prime areas where you'd really like to get some traction, more traction? Uh, I'll start in the Maritimes first. Um, when I look at New Brunswick, it's a great market. You have that Moncton Dieppe area, yep. you have St. John and Fredericton, three great markets right there. I think we do extremely well in. Um, I would say when you go into Ontario market, I would, uh, in particular that, that Southwest corridor, the Windsor, Sarnia, London area is a great opportunity outside the GT, that Brantford, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge area, and then Northern Ontario. There's lots of room for growth there. I mean, um, it's a market off that I well, say most franchisers maybe overlook at first, but we look at it as a key audience for ourselves. That That's our blue collar tradesperson, the guest that supports the Tommy Guns brand. That's our core audience is in those markets. Right. And, you know, let's, we're not going to open one of these in Bay Street, downtown Toronto. No. That's not, that's not our thing. Right. And, you know, when you look at the locations that you have, you get great locations and surrounding by other businesses where, where it's, it's, you know, the, the type of place where um, you end up going to get a haircut and, and, you know, you're not way out in the middle of the boondocks. Um, and, you know, of course, but, but locating that prime real estate, you guys are certainly involved in that. Correct. So we work, we have our own house and house leasing manager, and we also work with GLL across Canada when it's finding the right selections. So for ourselves, is that we take our time and do our due diligence. We're not just opening doors for the sake of opening doors. And I always love the saying internally with Keenan is, would you rather pay for the right location in the front end or for the wrong location every single day? 
and wants you to take your time in the site selection process. He personally goes out in the fields and makes sure it aligns with how we've been successful elsewhere. So look for rooftops. Is it a lot of households around it? Is it a service-based development where people naturally go for their services, their daily needs? Do they have uh, good ingress, egress? Can they get into the parking lot easy? Will my location be lost in the development? Do they have some of the right co-tenants in it? Do they have some of the key surrounding tenants like car dealerships, Home Depot's Canadian Tires? That's our guest base. We take our time in our site selection process. We find it. And then at that point in time, we shortlisted locations to potential candidates. So for example, if I was looking for someone from Mississauga, Ontario, I might present five or six opportunities that fit into our key demographics taking what are similar like audiences from across Canada, looking at the population and say a one, three, five kilometer radius. And the key aspect for us, how much money do they spend on grooming services and how much money do they spend on grooming products? Does the audience in the area spend money on personal care services? If they do, it aligns very well with how we perform elsewhere. Then we consider the location. Love it. Love it. Um, if someone right now was thinking about getting involved in franchising, Thinking, you know what, Tommy Gunn's original barbershop, that's interesting. I love the place. I love everything about it. Um, validation's massive. Uh, all that aside, what would you say to someone who's interested, A, in franchising and, and, and getting involved in a franchise system, and B, specifically, Tommy Gunn's original barbershop? If you're looking at franchising, the first thing, you're not only investing in the model of the concept, you're investing in the people. I want to make sure this is a relationship business that I'm comfortable with the person I'm partnering with overall. And what do you mean by that? There's always going to be good times and not so good times in franchising. It just happens in life. It happens in business. So making sure that person at the table, I can work with them when they're not so good times. That's the very first thing I would say for someone outside of it. Just don't think about the concept. People Think about the people behind the concept. Are they good people? Do I think I can do business with them? And in not so good times, can I work, think I can work through the problems together? And I would say for someone that's just looking at franchising in general, I always look at validation. Are your existing business owners reinvesting and opening new doors? And the reason being that if they're not willing to reinvest new doors, then there's probably some uh, alarm bells that should be going off because maybe they're not happy with their initial return on investment or they're not happy with the support they're getting from their franchisor. If, you're, if your existing business owners are reopening door or opening new locations, that for me is your key check mark. That's the financial health of the business. Love it. Love it. I tell you, um, I've yet to meet anyone who's not happy with Tommy Guns or franchise owner or barbershop. It's just, it just doesn't get much better when you look at the traditional bricks and mortar. Like nothing against food. There's nothing against food franchises. I mean, they represent almost forty percent of of franchises specifically in Canada. I think it's been thirty, just under thirty seven percent now. But for brick and mortar, fit up, uh, you know, four wall location. A lot of people that are would traditionally look at maybe the coffee, maybe the burger, are looking at Tommy Guns and saying, well, hey, there's opportunity for growth, which is great because you're a powerhouse of a brand, but you still have room to grow. Um, what are the what are the conversations that you're having from from some franchise candidates that might have been looking at at food and or or in that category that are saying, huh, this might be for me? I think the first thing is. Um... You know, what starts with, I would say, recession and tech resistance. Hmm. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are concerned, especially in the food service side, the impact on third-party delivery and margins, right? So they like the fact that technology enhances the experience. It makes it easier for guests to check in for a service, right? Then actually taking away from the experience. They don't think it's going to replace it. People are always going to go to barbershops. They like the fact that even if the economy stops growing, your hair still keeps growing. So they're looking, yeah. un, they have a natural reason to return as a guest. Um, and they love the fact that even when it's a downturn economy, people still want to be their best self, right? They still want to feel good about themselves, whether it's keeping the job they have, interviewing for the job they don't have. They got to feel good about themselves. So that way they, they, you know, they can go about their day and they have that positive attitude to like, what's next in my future, right? And that's the first thing, recession and tech resistant. I would say after that, um, what they really like about the multiple revenue streams with us, right? Having the retail with the service, right? How likely a guest is more likely to return when they purchase a retail product with the service. They like the fact that we focus on that as a company, right? Because often you may get a great haircut, but how do I replicate it two days later? Our barbers educate, recommend, and prescribe the right products behind the chair. So when people start to hear about those two things, like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Then the next, how do you tr attract talent? That's the key thing about this because it's a licensed barber. Well, having us been an industry veterans for so long, having the retail partners, getting involved with the barbering schools, working with the local communities to find talent to work for us, we do that better than anyone else. People want to work for us because they know they're going to grow personally, they're going to grow professionally, and they're going to grow financially. Right? Love it. Love it. 
Well, Malcolm, look, man, I know how busy you are. I think we got a couple minutes. You got to bounce to uh, you're a busy guy. And I appreciate <laughs> you taking the time. It's always great. And uh, this gives us some great stuff to send out to people that are interested in Tommy Gunn's original barbershop. And uh, we look forward to doing this again really soon and watching your growth, man. It's, it's amazing to see you. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve, very much. Appreciate it. Right. You know what? I love what you're doing with Frank and I love what you're doing with these brands. You're finding the right, uh, I would say, franchisor with the right candidate, right? You take your time to align. You award franchises, not sell franchises. So that award that aligns very well with us uh, personally, too, as, as an organization. And two, I love the family feel with your, your company organization. It really is. This is a community, the franchise. It's a small world, right? We're all here to help one another out. This is a great opportunity for people to get into franchising and leave, uh, fulfill their lifelong dreams, whether it's, you know, getting that, you know, exit, opening up a cottage, whether that's exiting another their existing job, whether that's building a, a, a generational business. This is what franchising actually offers people, right? And you do a really good job of that. I really wish you nothing but the best with Frank Canada. We're very fortunate to be partners with you in East Brand and Frank Canada. It's, it's been a fantastic relationship thus far. We can't see where it's going to take us in the future. Well, man, listen, the pleasure's ours. And we take a lot of, we take a lot of pride in that. We love uh, partnering with the brands that we partner with. And, you know, the one thing that I can say, I don't have many talents, but we haven't had one franchise that we've awarded, not one. And the whole time we've been in business, that has went out of business, that has a legal battle. We really want to make sure that it's the right fit for both sides because, uh, um, you know, there's nowhere to go but up that way. So, and it's always, always a pleasure to work with Tommy Guns. And I tell you, man, I wear this shirt in the Harley. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, brother. You take care and have a great day. You too. Thanks, Dave. Okay, man. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Fran Canada podcast, where we speak all things franchising in Canada. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share below. You can also visit our website, our Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, Instagram, and please add me on LinkedIn.